Hello, my name is Michael Manna. I'm an attorney and I am the managing partner in the law firm of Michael A. Manna and Associates. We are located in Ridgewood, New Jersey, and I'd like to tell you a little bit why I think our firm is kind of unique in the field. First of all, I think to be an effective estate planner and elder law attorney, you have to have knowledge of accounting, taxes, uh, estate tax laws, uh, estates and trusts, as well as Medicaid regulations. I'd like to tell you a little bit about me. I grew up in Ramsey. I went to Don Bosco High School. I went to Boston College. I was an accounting major. I graduated in 1970. I was seventh in my class. My mother was very happy. And I went to Boston College Law School. I graduated in 1973. I was in the top 10%. And I then went to work for a CPA firm that's now called KPMG. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but it's the third largest certified public accounting firm in the world. And I worked in their tax department. And I've been practicing law now in Ridgewood for the last 41 years. I only do elder law and estate planning. I have taught this tub subject to other lawyers. I've taught it to certified public accountants. I've teach it to social workers. They all need a certain amount of mandatory continuing education every year, and I am authorized to teach them. And I'm a member of the National Academy of Elder Law Attorneys. There's only 4,000 of us in the country. And uh, so this is what I do, this is all I do, this is what our firm does, okay? So when you are in uh, need of this kind of a service, you are getting older, you think you might get uh, ill, you may need to go into a nursing home, I don't know if you're aware of it, but the average nursing home now is about $12,000 a month, the better ones are fifteen dollars to $18,000 a month. So you can go broke very, very quickly, and knowledge really is power. And so what I would suggest is that if you're in that situation, you need a will, you need a power of attorney, you need a living will, uh, you give us a call. It's our office policy that the first visit is on the house, so you can come in for free. We can kind of kick the tires together, and uh, the firm's phone number is 201-447-2800. It's 201-447-2800. I want you to thank you for listening. Please go to my channel, Michael Manna. Uh, on YouTube, and you will see at least five to eight uh, videos. We're now going to be putting up some more. Uh, there's a lot of things that I think uh, you'd find very helpful. Thank you for watching. Hi, welcome back. Uh, this is Michael Manna. I'm an attorney. Uh, I am the senior partner in a elder law and estate planning firm in Ridgewood, New Jersey. It's called Michael A. Manna and Associates. And I have a series of videos here on YouTube as well as on my website. And I tell you, I, had, I did five about a year ago, and I have reviewed them because I like to keep them current. And I can tell you they are all good law. I do not have to redo them. I do want to tell you something that's unusual that has happened in New Jersey in the last month. I don't know if, you're, uh, if you have noticed when you pull into a gas station, you're now paying 23 cents a gallon more for your gasoline than you did uh, last month, the beginning of last month. And that is because uh, New Jersey passed legislation to uh, replenish the Transportation Trust Fund, which was uh, uh, insolvent. And as part of that deal, they are going to lower uh, sales taxes over the next two years, and in addition, eliminate New Jersey's estate tax. Now, New Jersey was the number one most expensive state in the country to die, okay? It's probably the most expensive to live, but it was the number one most expensive state in the country to die, and one of the reasons is because it has this estate tax. Believe it or not, if you have no spouse and you leave your assets to your children, if you leave more than $675,000, you would pay New Jersey estate tax, and the first bracket is 37%, okay? It goes from 37% down to 4.8. You heard me right. It's zero from 675, from zero to 675, the rate is zero. At 675, it's 37%. The next bracket goes down to 4.8, and then it goes up to 16% when you have a $10 million estate. Well, I'm happy to tell you that as long as you live until January 1 of next year, 2017, you can have an estate up to $2 million and you don't have to pay this tax. And if you hang in there until January 1, 2018, the tax will be completely gone and you will not have to worry about New Jersey estate tax anymore. I want you to keep this in mind because if you have a will that predates this, that is a tax sensitive will trying to save these taxes, you really need to see uh, one, a, a lawyer to review it to see if it needs to be done. 
If you want to come into my office anytime, I'd be happy to see you for nothing for the very first visit. Again, it's Michael Manor. We're at uh, 66 South Maple Avenue, Ridgewood, New Jersey. The phone number for our firm is 201-447-2800. That's 201-447-2800. Be happy to see you for a free one-hour consultation. Thanks for watching. Please check my channel, Michael Manor, on YouTube. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Michael Manna. I am the senior partner in a uh, law firm located in Ridgewood, New Jersey. The law firm's name is Michael A. Manna and Associates. Uh, we are an elder law and estate planning firm. If you want to check on my channel, Michael Manna, on YouTube, you will uh, find a couple of videos that have our qualifications. I just don't want to waste the time in this video going over it again. I will just tell you that I do teach this material. I have taught this material to other lawyers for the New Jersey Institute for Continuing Legal Education. I teach it to certified public accountants. I teach it to social workers. Uh, and this is all I do. Uh, I've been doing this. Uh, I've been in practice in Ridgewood for the last 41 years. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about federal estate tax. The way federal estate tax works, you can leave unlimited wealth to a spouse, no tax at all. Uh, if you leave your wealth to a child or children or anyone else other than your spouse, Right now, you can leave up to $5,450,000 without having to pay any federal estate tax. And if you do the right thing, when the first one of you dies, if you're a married couple, you can, uh, the second uh, person to die in that couple can leave up to $10,900,000 and pay no federal estate tax. Any tax over that's at the rate of 40%. Of course, uh, the president-elect, uh, Donald Trump, uh, one of the things he wants to do is eliminate this tax, whether or not it'll happen or not. Nobody knows, okay? I just know you have to deal with it now, and 98% of us don't have to worry about it, but we have to make sure that what you want to happen on your death happens. So call us up, come on in for a free one-hour consultation. Uh, the phone number is 201-447-2800. It's 201-447-2800. We're in Ridgewood, New Jersey, on uh, 66 South Maple Avenue. Thanks for uh, watching. Please don't hesitate to go take a look at YouTube at my channel, Michael Manna. You'll find about uh, six to ten videos there, and I think you might find them all uh, informative. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Michael Manna. I'm the senior partner in an elder law and estate planning firm known as Michael A. Manna and Associates. We are on Maple Avenue in Ridgewood, New Jersey, and I have a series of videos. If you go to my uh, channel on YouTube, Michael Manna, uh, you'll see between uh, six and a dozen uh, videos on various topics. I just want to tell you a little bit about the dangers of having joint bank accounts. Uh, I have people who think that they can avoid probating their will uh, by having uh, assets held jointly with one or more of their children or one or more of their friends. Uh, I have found this is more trouble than it's worth. The first thing I want to tell you is probating a will in New Jersey is nothing. You just have to go down to Hackensack with the original will, death certificate, pay them about a hundred bucks, and that is probate, okay? Uh, when you have assets that are held jointly with another, you create all kinds of problems. Uh, I had a case where the woman had an ass uh, assets joint with her nephew. She had a falling out with her nephew. She could not find the book, the, uh, the uh, savings account book. Uh, she wanted the money back. We could not get a duplicate book because the nephew would not sign a lost passbook certificate. Uh, this woman, the bank, wound up froze, freezing her account, $100,000 of her own money. Now, can you imagine? She didn't have access to even her own money. Luckily, we were going to go to court. Uh, she didn't want to pay for it. She said she was just going to chalk it up to experience. She was an 84-year-old lady. And luckily, somebody up there must have been watching because uh, the guy four months later dropped out of a heart attack and joint accounts go back to the surviving joint owner. So, but for the grace of somebody, she wouldn't have seen her money again during her lifetime. So don't do this. Instead, come in, uh, meet with us in my office. I'd be happy to sit down with you for a one hour free consultation. Uh, again, it's Michael Manna and Associates. That's M-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Our phone number at the office is 201-447-2800. That's 201-447-2800. Thanks for watching. Hello, this is Michael Manna. I'm an attorney. Uh, I am the senior partner in Michael Manna and Associates. We are an elder law and estate planning firm in Ridgewood, New Jersey. And I want to talk to you today about the appalling costs of nursing homes and health care. 
Uh, the average nursing home now in New Jersey costs about $12,000 a month, and the better ones are $14,000 to $18,000 a month. So a person can go broke very, very quickly uh, if they ever get sick. What you don't want to do is nothing and just wait until it happens, and then you can wind up becoming insolvent. You can spend all your money very, very quickly. There are programs that will pay for uh, nursing homes, pay for assisted living. Um, there is Medicare. If you are 65 years of age or older or you are disabled, Medicare will pay nursing home costs for you, but only for 100 days. They will pay 100% of the first 20 days, and they will pay 80% of the next 80 days. If you have supplemental insurance like Blue Cross Blue Shield or AARP, they will pay the other 20%, but only if Medicare is paying the first 80%. Once you're done with those 100 days, and by the way, they will only pay under certain circumstances. You must have spent at least three nights in a nursing home, I mean, I'm sorry, in a, in a hospital, have spent at least three midnights in a hospital after having been admitted. Not that you're there for observation, you have to have been admitted for three nights. And then within 30 days, you have to be referred out to a skilled nursing facility, it's called a SNF. And as long as you need rehabilitation, or you need uh, skilled medical care, Medicare will pay for the first 100% uh, of the first 20 days and 80% of the next 80 days. That extra 20%, if you don't have supplemental insurance, is gonna cost you around $160 a day. So please make sure that you, uh, you get that insurance. We're gonna talk more about this in uh, more episodes. I wanna thank you for watching. The phone number for our office is 201. 447-2800. It's 201-447-2800. Come on in. I'd love to meet you. It's our office policy. The first visit's for free. So I hope to see you soon. Uh, also, please check out my channel, Michael Manna, on YouTube, and you can see the rest of my videos. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon. Hello, this is Michael Manna. I want to thank you for coming back and watching my videos. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about me. I'm an attorney. I am the senior partner in Michael A. Manna and Associates. We are an elder law and estate planning law firm located in Ridgewood, New Jersey. Uh, in the last episode, we were talking about nursing homes and uh, how much, how expensive they are. It can cost you up to $18,000 uh, a month. I had one client, his wife is on a respirator, costing him $32,000 a month. So you can go broke very, very quickly. Uh, in our last video, we talked about Medicare and what Medicare will cover. And uh, we indicated that it'll cover up to 100 days. But after that, you are kind of on your own. The first thing you should uh, check out is, do you have long-term care insurance? Or have you considered long-term care insurance? I will tell you that if you have a long-term care insurance policy, and you've had it for quite a long time, you probably have a good policy. Uh, most of the companies that sell long-term care insurance have gotten out of the business because they were charging very little for premiums and forgot that they may have to pay claims. But if you have an existing policy, uh, I would say nine times out of 10, if you've had it at least 10 or 15 years, the cost is reasonable considering uh, you know, what the benefits might be. But typically they pay so much a day, they pay for the rest of your life. Uh, some of them, the newer policies only pay for a number of years. I got long-term care insurance for my wife. Uh, it will pay up to $6,000 a month. She has a pool of about $300,000. Uh, it will pay that $6,000 a month until that pool is, uh, is exhausted. And uh, every year, the $6,000 a month and the pool goes up 5%. And it costs me about $3,000 a year for this insurance. Uh, my wife is, uh, we got the insurance when she was uh, 58. Uh, my feeling about it is that uh, even though I pay it for 20 years, it's only $60,000 for the premium. And uh, in, in uh, 20 years, that'll probably pay two, year, two months of nursing homes. So you ought to really check it out. I think it's a good thing uh, for you to see. They would not uh, write a policy on, on me. I have a history of migraines, and they didn't like that. They're very, very picky now. There's only one company out there that sells it. But if you want to come in and talk about ways to save money uh, in the event you get sick, uh, we're going to continue with these videos. But if you'd like to come in and see me, I'd love to see you. Our first visit is on the house. So please give us a call in my office in Ridgewood, New Jersey. The phone number is 201-447-2800. It's 201-447-2800. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Michael Manna. Uh, I am the senior partner in Michael A. Manna & Associates. We're in Ridgewood, New Jersey. 
and I want to talk to you about how you pay for nursing homes. Uh, if you do not have long-term care insurance or your Medicare has run out, you will have to pay for the nursing home out of your own funds. Nursing homes run between $12,000 and $18,000 a month, so you can go broke very quickly. If you are married, you can keep certain assets, but otherwise you will have to spend all of your, uh, your funds. Uh, if you give away assets, which a lot of people do, Medicaid will punish you. Medicaid is for poor people. If you give your assets away, you are making yourself artificially poor and Medicaid will punish you. There are uh, rules that apply uh, for when you make gifts. If you give away anything, Medicaid, you could make yourself ineligible for Medicaid for five years from the time you made that gift, unless you get that gift back. So you have to be very, very careful when you make gifts. We are going to be talking about uh, how to do that safely. You really don't want to make gifts to children. I don't care how good they are, how good the kids they are. Uh, if they die before you, you may have to deal with an in-law. Uh, most people do not want to do that. Uh, your child could get sued, go bankrupt, uh, spend your money on something that they can't get back. So you have to be very, very careful about that. We recommend instead using living trusts, irrevocable living trusts. And we'll talk about that in future uh, episodes. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, again, it's Michael Manna. You want to come in and see me, I'd be happy to see you for free. Our office phone number is 201-447-2800. That's 201-447-2800. Thanks for watching. Hi, this is Michael Manna. I am an estate planning attorney, elder law attorney in the firm of Michael A. Manna and Associates. We are located in Ridgewood, New Jersey on uh, South Maple Avenue. Our phone number is 201-447-2800. I want to talk to you uh, about continue our discussion about uh, elder law eligibility uh, so that Medicaid, there is a federal program called Medicaid, not Medicare, Medicaid that will pay for nursing homes, it'll pay for doctors, it'll pay for uh, medications, it'll pay for up to 40 to 50 hours a week of in-home care, it'll pay for adult day care, it'll pay for assisted living. But in order to be eligible, you must be poor, okay? Now I want to tell you about my mother. My mother died about three years ago. She was 98 years old. She had about a half a million dollars worth of assets. And back in 1993, when she was 79, I uh, said to her, I said, Mom, I want you to give all your assets to my sister and I. Uh, Joanne is my sister. She's a wonderful person. I trust her uh, holding my wallet. We both have a great relationship with my mother. My mother said, why do you want me to do this? I said, I'm afraid as you get older, you're going to get sick. It'll all go up in smoke, all your money for your health care. My mother said, fine, I don't have a problem giving it to you and Joanne, but I never want to have to ask your wife or my son-in-law for my money. So I was afraid if she gave... Uh, a quarter of a million to me and a quarter of a million to my sister and my sister died before my mother and I'll tell you my sister is five years older than I she had a scare with some cancer a few years ago it's not out of the question she could die before me and then I would have to be dealing with my brother-in-law don't get me wrong he is a wonderful guy I'm sure he'd give me no trouble but it's not his money not his mother not his business really he's not a member of the tribe okay so instead, we created an irrevocable living trust. This is a trust that my mother cannot change once she sets it up. And she had about a half a million dollars worth of assets, and we put those assets in that trust. Now, the trust says my mother is entitled to nothing. And why does it say that? Well, if the trust, if my mother's entitled to anything from the trust, Medicaid would want to exhaust what she could get from the trust before they would pay. So my mother had to take a leap of faith that my sister and I were not going to screw and of course. We have a wonderful relationship with my mother. We would never do that, okay? The other good thing about a trust is that the trust owns my mother's assets, not my sister and I. And because the trust owns it, it doesn't matter if we die, we get sued, we go bankrupt, we get divorced. It is not our money. It's the trust money. So it's kind of in Fort Knox. And once you put it in there, it's very, very safe. My sister and I are just the trustees. We run this trust. Now, when my mother needed money, we would take money out of the trust, either put it into my account or my sister's account, and my sister would spend it on my mother or give it to my mother or, or I would do those things. In the meantime, my mother, when she turned 90, got macular degeneration, blind in one eye and the other eye going, and at 90, she was still driving on the parkway back and forth from Tom's River, and in one month, she got to two car accidents. So I went down to see her. 
and I was ready for a big fight. I said, Mom, you can't drive anymore. You're going to kill yourself. You're going to kill somebody else. You've got to give me the keys to the car. My mother, surprisingly, didn't argue. She gave me the keys, but she said, I cannot live here anymore. There's no public transportation. I can't get to the stores. I can't get to the doctors. I can't live anymore. I said, don't worry about it. I found a very nice assisted living facility a mile away from my sister. Now, my sister's five years older than me. She's retired. She adores my mother. And uh, my mother walked three miles a day until she was 95, which is probably why she lived to be 98. In any event, I got her into this. Why am I telling you this story? This assisted living facility cost $5,700 a month, $5,700 a month. When I got her on Medicaid, instead of paying $5,700 a month, we only paid $700 a month. I say $5,000 a month. That's $60,000 a year. This went on for five years. Okay. So we saved about $300,000, would have wiped my mother out. In the meantime, we only used the money for my mother. We furnished her apartment. We got her big screen TV. We got her $8,500 uh, uh, hearing aids. We, uh, we sent her on vacations. We bought all her clothes. Uh, 15 weeks before she died, she fell out of bed. She didn't break any bones, but she was very frail. We got a live in. Cost us $1,000 a week to toilet her, to feed her, to bathe her, uh, to be her companion. We had plenty of money to pay for those 15 weeks. And when my mother died, we still had $520,000 left in the trust, which all I had to do was write a check to my sister for 260, a check to myself for the same amount, no probate, no nothing, worked out very well. Uh, you have to do this five years before you get sick. If you do it three years after you get sick, no problem, you only have to pay for two more years of uh, your care. You said before, not after. I'm sorry? You have to prepare this trust, you have to fund this trust five years before you get sick. Because Medicaid will punish you for giving assets away um, uh, if you give it away within the five-year period. But if you've set one up and you don't think you're going to make the five years, you only make three years, well, we only have to pay for two more. If you get sick after four years, we only have to pay for one more. So it's a shrinking exposure. This is something I think every senior should consider, and it can also be done to save death taxes. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, again, it's Michael Manna. You want to come in and see me, I'd be happy to see you for free. Our office phone number is 201-447-2800. That's 201-447-2800. Thanks for watching.